Well, hello and welcome back for yet another episode from Darkstorm Rising. You've caught me mid-assembly of yet more of High Fleet Morrigoth. Um, and today we're going to cover one of the most um, anxiety-causing uh, and terrifying moments during miniature making and not just because blood is involved. And that's uh, the actual application of blood to our miniatures. So you've finished doing all the modelling, you've painted your miniature up, you think it looks beautiful and now are you just about to destroy it by putting blood all over it. So let's go have a look at the table. Let's go see a few techniques to hopefully make it look a, a tidy application and a, a realistic application of the blood um, so that when we put it on the table, it doesn't just look like somebody's poured jelly all over the, over the figure. So uh, let's go over to the table and see what we can manage. Well, hello and welcome to the Warhammer House of Horror. Uh, here to create blood effects for your delectation. Um, we have our choice of weaponry in front of us. My two favoured uh, ways of creating blood are with Tamiya uh, X27, X19. So that's a clear red and smoke. The two together make a gorgeous, um, fairly recent, fresh bloody look. The more smoke that you apply, the longer the blood uh, looks like it's been on the body. Um, and then there's the green stuff world, um, true blood and coagulated blood. True blood, very fresh, coagulated, makes it look like it's been there for a little while. Uh, so a mixture of the two again gives you a good uh, and realistic application. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some into the um, tray. I'm going to, today I'm going to use the X27 and the X19. Um, doesn't really matter which. And then your choice of weapon will either be a toothbrush or a, uh, a fairly stiff bristle brush. And the idea is that we're going to just flick um, the, the blood at the, at the miniature uh, and try and create a realistic blood splatter uh, in a controlled way so that we can put it onto the weapons, onto the body, around the face and try and get a realistic um, display. Okay, so we've prepared um, some of the... Tamiya red and smoke. Um, I put some into my pot. It is quite a thick solution um, and just putting that onto a toothbrush is not really going to come off very well. So well, I'm just going to mix a little bit of water in which will still leave it a little bit goopy. So what we're going to do, I'll just pop that to one side, is we're going to get the toothbrush which we've loaded with the paint just pop it into some um, of the mix and then a tiny, just a touch, very literally touch the tip of the bristles into your paint pot, shake off some of the excess water and then just test it. First of all, there we go, lovely spray pattern. We'll come to the model and then flick it against where we want the blood. A little bit more water, make sure it's nice and sprayy. Is that as a verb? And then onto the blade. A little bit more water. So just tap off the excess. And okay, I think we've got a fairly good coverage there. Or maybe a little bit more this side of the face. So, come on camera, play with me. There we go. So the effect we've got is a fairly concentrated mass around the face, some splatters onto the blade, 
And what I'm going to do now is just with a very fine toothbrush, get some of the blood and give it a bit more of a directed application onto the brush. So where somebody would have hit against the blade, give it a tiny little bit of splatter where the impact would have occurred. And then we'll just draw in a bit of a, a dotted line, a couple of directions away from, oh, that's a bit heavy, but. So we can see it makes it look like an impact point. Repeat the impact point, roughly the same area on the front of the blade and on the opposite side. Go, go for another one on this blade as well. Okay, there we go. So I think you can see that that's quite a nice pattern of spray and that's really all there is to it. It's just making sure that the, the, um, the blood is wet enough to actually leave, to leave the actual, um, the, the um, toothbrush is the word I'm desperately struggling for. Um, but I think we've got some nice blood patterns there. We've got a nice saturation. He's definitely had his afternoon meal. Um, and I think that will do me. Um, I tend to put mainly the blood splatters on the close combat squads. Uh, any range squads, um, I tend to do a lot less blood splattering, if any. Because uh, the idea is they're not meant to be getting in close combat. So that's just one thing to think about. Um, I've got some kill scenes that I'm just about to do. So... And these are, there's a little Ravener horde here attacking, a, well, bursting out of a space marine. Um, so again, that'll give us another chance to play with some gore. Um, but for the time being, that'll do us. Uh, I'll continue trying to build the army up. And uh, hopefully that was useful to you. And I've now got to go clear up the mess I've made. Well, that was a lovely quick episode to film. Nice, easy, simple technique to learn. The main thing about applying things like blood are that after you've gone to all that effort of uh, painting your model is that you're terrified of actually ruining the model. But it's pretty hard to do. It's, you have to really go to town with the blood before it looks too saturated. So just as long as you're gentle with it and just take your time, nice, easy technique, it looks wonderful afterwards. And then a few brush strokes to give it a bit more of an application and a bit more thoroughness. And it looks really, really nice. So I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, please do like and subscribe if you did. I've got to get back to work on all the other miniatures and doing some more content for you. Uh, and in the meantime, what do we say here on Darkstorm Rising? Are we painting minis yet? Hell yeah! Catch you in the next one.